a huge shame is that we've now um, had two major global earth shattering events, the COVID pandemic and the war in Russia now. Mm -hmm. That are two incredible excuses for us to um, get away from fossil fuels and become energy independent while um, investing in renewables. And it almost feels like at this point we've had, you know, not one, again, two different events that have really made the case for investing in things like more abundant public transit and everything else that comes with things like the Green New Deal. And the fact that we can't get the mobilization in this moment really, really doesn't speak to a hopeful future in these mm -hmm. endeavors. And it's, it's really sad. Um, you know, I'm curious if this tune is going to change. I mean, we're close to the midterms already, so again, I think it's it's a really it's a bad situation, seemingly getting worse mm -hmm. every day. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I there, there's a little bit maybe, maybe the Biden can do, you know, theoretically. He already released some of the oil from the Strategic Reserve and stuff like that. He can do this sort of stuff. It might help a little bit. There's only a few months until the midterms. It's mm -hmm. difficult to imagine how he's going to significantly change the the situation. Uh, by then, and in the next couple of years, I mean, some things will change. Maybe Russia will pull out of Ukraine or that situation will have settled down. There's a few things that might influence it, but it is entirely possible that we will cruise into like the DeSantis administration or something without much having fundamentally changed. What will change when he's sworn in is that the Republicans will no longer care about the gas prices. I mean, maybe they'll, they'll still use it as an excuse to deregulate, but they certainly won't blame the administration. If inflation continues, they won't care. And, you know, vice versa, the Democrats will suddenly use it as a convenient political tool. None of this is fundamentally about the actual substance of these price increases. It's just a convenient uh, political tool, which is unfortunate mm -hmm. because people are being squeezed. Inflation continues to harm American households across the country. In fact, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics has released new data showing just how deep the problem is. Now, the reasons for inflation should also be addressed and corporate greed has a lot to do with it. And we'll get to that in a bit, so hold tight. First, let me give you the data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They find this, that the inflation hit another 40 year high as the consumer price index jumped 7.9% in the past year. Increases for food, gasoline and shelter contributed the most to inflation with gas prices increasing 6.6% and accounted for nearly a third of all items monthly increase. Now the index for food has also increased by 1% according to this data, while the food at home index increased 1.4% with both being the biggest increase since April of 2020. And keep in mind, this news comes as we have learned more about increases in wages. Like that's something that some of these corporations try to celebrate, but wages have not kept up with inflation. The news comes despite the fact that the United States added 678,000 jobs in February and wages jumped 5.1%. Now the fact of the matter is, these corporations seem to have taken full advantage of the inflation hysteria, the inflation narrative in the press to just jack up their prices to bolster their profits, even if they don't need to do it, even if there's no problem with supply chain shortages or supply chain issues. Um, so the top 30 companies, for instance, in the major industry categories of the consumer price index have raised prices while collectively boosting their profits by $151 billion. And that's according to a watchdog group known as Accountable US. Uh, the three biggest firms in the food at home category, Walmart, Kroger, and unfortunately Costco as well, saw their net incomes rise a combined $238 million. Grocery prices were up 8.6% in February compared with the previous year, the Bureau of Labor Statistics announced on Tuesday. And what do they do with these profits, folks? Uh, do they use these profits to help out their employees with the inflation that they're causing by just arbitrarily increasing prices? No, of course not, they don't do that at all. Uh, what they do is pay themselves again further by buying shares of their own stocks. So uh, the, uh, the companies also bought back an additional $28 billion of their own shares, a strategy to boost the stock price, which also happens to boost executive compensation because they own shares of the company themselves. I should also note that the board for Amazon has just approved another $10 billion 
in corporate stock buybacks. So that's what they do with the profits uh, after they increase prices following uh, all of these headlines about inflation. Okay guys, so let me explain who's responsible for inflation. Uh, when you look at the margins, you see the clear answer um, and you'll be able to see it for yourself. So you see inflation going up um, depending on the quarter, six to eight percent, right? Uh, so the, one of the most, well, actually the most recent quarter that we have information for uh, is the fourth quarter of last year. And so for the S&P 500, those are the top 500 companies, what was their profit margin? Now this is important because, hey listen, if it turns out that inflation is at 8%, uh, but their profit margins are down at Walmart and those giant companies, uh, and so they're passing on some of the price increases to you guys, but they're also taking a hit and their profit margins have gone down, right? Then you would say, hey, inflation is a real problem for everybody and businesses are just responding to supply and demand, right? No, their profit margins are up.